In this video, I'm going to show you how using time room mapping in After Effects can make animations like this easier and less time consuming. Hi, I'm Adam Bennett. This is a video shot. If you spent much time in After Effects, you'll be used to using the graph editor to finesse your animation timing. But the more keyframes you have in your scene, the longer it takes to adjust things. Not to mention when you have to switch between the speed graph and the value graph. I'm going to show you a workflow where you end up with just one set of keyframes. And crucially, you can just use the value graph to adjust the timing because maybe like me, you fucking hate the speed graph. As usual, there are links in the description below for all the project files. Okay, let's get started. Here I've made a simple paper aeroplane rig using shape layers. I parented the layers to a master null and turned off auto orientation on that null and instead set it to orient along path. So now when we keyframe the position of that null and even move it around in Z space, the airplane is always banking correctly. No, not that kind of banking. There we go. But even so, I needed to make some adjustments to the orientation and also scale it in places. So we've got three sets of keyframes and our animation looks like this. It's slow, jerky, awkward, and well, rubbish. If anyone says just like all your animations, then I'm walking off right now. To finesse it, we need to go into the graph editor as we want it to slow down and speed up in specific places. But that's gonna be fiddly. We can only tweak the position keyframes using the speed graph because we don't wanna separate the dimensions with this kind of animation. Same for the orientation. And most of the position keyframes are roving keyframes, so we have a constant speed for the airplane. In short, it's fiddly and time consuming. So let's not worry about easing at all in this comp. Forget about it completely. We'll keep the timing completely linear, so no speeding up or slowing down, so that the airplane moves with a constant velocity. And you don't even need to be totally precious about that part, just as long as the speed doesn't suddenly change like this. So this animation, even though it's janky, will be fine because we're going to speed it up massively overall. And even though it's jerky, the speed is constant. A good tip for checking the speed is to look at the dots on the position path of whatever you're animating. They represent the frames in your comp. If they look evenly spread, then you should be fine. Also, it doesn't matter how long the animation is. In this case, it's about seven seconds. It could be five, 10, 20 seconds, whatever. As long as what you're animating looks okay, in this case, the Bezier curves are the position vertex points, the way the plane banks, and how big or small it is in frame, and the constant speed that we've just looked at. What we'll do is pull this animation into a new comp and enable time room mapping. You can do that using this shortcut, or right click in and select in time, enable time room mapping. It automatically gives us keyframes at the start and end, and we're going to add keyframes for the parts of our animation where we want the plane to slow down. So in this case here, and here and then another one here just after it flies off screen. You can see that the keyframes correspond to the time code in our pre-comp, or frames view if you prefer that. Now let's look at those keyframes in the graph editor. At the moment, the line is straight and linear, but if we easy ease those keyframes and then pull them closer together, we're gonna to get a much more interesting and zippy animation. As I said before, I personally hate the speed graph view. So I find tweaking and easing time room mapping values like this much more preferable. Just make sure you have auto select or the value graph selected in the graph editor view options here. So now here we only have to adjust four keyframes, not one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, fifteen or more. So it doesn't take long to go from this to this. Let's look at a couple more animations which use time room mapping. I've done tutorials on different methods for animating different typefaces, animations like these. Sometimes you get a tricky letter and you can either mask it on like this or use echo and do it like this. You can watch the tutorials for a more in-depth explanation. If we take this one, it's a pain, frankly. If you watch the tutorial, you'll see it's because the weight of the typeface isn't consistent. So you can't use a trim path as a mat. You have to manually mask the letter on. So instead we're using the animated trim path as a timing guide. So we know when to move the mask and have it animate on in a linear fashion. But if we added or wanted to adjust the ease in, we'd have to tweak all of these keyframes. It'd be a nightmare. But if we use time room mapping, we only have to adjust two keyframes and adjust the ease and takes a second or two. Boom. In my last tutorial, I covered the process for creating this 3D text animation. Do watch it if you want to know how to achieve this look with live editable text. For the bounce and extrusion of the letters, I use time room mapping to make life easier. Each letter is its own comp and there are loads of keyframes to adjust in each comp. You might be thinking, is there not a clever way using expressions to reduce all those keyframes? Okay, well, yes, there is. And I do show that in the tutorial. But if you're a beginner, you may not be comfortable with expressions. And I don't want to be specific to this particular animation. You might be animating something that's not easy to simplify to one set of keyframes. Anyway, retiming all these keyframes here to a springy bounce effect would take some time. Especially as we'd need to do it multiple times as we have a few letters. 
So I just animated each letter in a linear way, going from here to fully extruded. Then, just like the paper airplane, I brought that letter into another comp and then used timer mapping. This is why I much prefer the value graph, because you can easily see visually the curve that you need with time room mapping to get that springy bounce. And then once you're happy, all you have to do is copy and paste those keyframes onto the other letters. Lastly, let's look at this animation, which I did a separate tutorial on. Another benefit of time room mapping is that you can easily loop animations using the loop expression. Then once you've done that, it's super easy to tweak the timing of the comps to get all your elements looping together. Before I let you go, I'm not saying this is a workflow you should use all the time. It won't be suitable if you have footage in your pre comps for example, or if you're animating things like overshoots, which overlap other parts of your animation. But it can be a huge time saver with the examples I've shown you in this video, and you can use it even more subtly to fine tune animation timings. And obviously you can slow down animations as well as speeding them up. Not to mention it opens up a whole world of possibilities with expressions. I've already shown an example of that with this animation here in an early tutorial, so check that out if that sounds useful to you. Thanks for watching, see you again soon.